Good evening. Thank you for being with us. There is plenty on. I mentioned last night that the no case on The Voice has suddenly grown stronger with the outstanding decision by Peter Dutton to elevate Jacinta Price to the opposition front bench. She will take on the Indigenous Australians portfolio and lead the Liberal campaign against what is increasingly looking like a yes campaign based on deception and denial. They won't tell you the detail because the detail would shock you. This is no simple change, and I'll keep addressing that truth. That let's see now how the government goes in attacking spokespeople for the no campaign. All we've heard so far is name calling and vitriol. See if they're game to try that tactic on the no spokesperson, who now happens to be both a woman and an Indigenous Australian. Well, along with that, the shadow treasurer, Angus Taylor, has stepped up to the plate and rightly told Treasurer Chalmers to stop hiding behind, and I quote, grim forecasts and the RBA, and instead, quote, take responsibility for the fact that higher inflation, higher interest rates come out of Canberra. Now, Chalmers has done absolutely nothing of benefit as Treasurer, except paint a picture of gloom and doom, presumably, as I have said, to cover his backside over the forthcoming budget, which presumably will provide no answers to our cost of living pressures or indeed our debt. And then we learn at no surprise that delays to Snowy Hydro and the Curry Curry gas plant are going to create big problems, surprise, surprise, for the Minister of Stupidity, Chris Bowen, who thinks he'll navigate to a transition to renewable energy. Well, here we are potentially an energy superpower. But on the world front, large swathes of Europe have pivoted back to coal as they wean themselves off Russian gas. And all those bold predictions made last year at that waste of space in Glasgow, that the end of coal was in sight, those predictions are at best laughable. Germany, Austria, Poland, Italy, the Netherlands and Greece have turned back to coal-fired power. What are we doing? We've got heaps of it, yet we've got people in government denying us the economic benefits that come from cheap energy. And Albo and the Labor government are enjoying a honeymoon. Well, my advice is enjoy it while it lasts, because I'll tell you something, a divorce is on the way. Now, look, if you're a Sydney cider or a visitor to Sydney, you won't be surprised to learn that as an international city, Sydney is way behind global cities like London, Paris and New York in terms of affordability, safety, nightlife and an ideological town hall administration telling business how to run business. Developers wanting to provide housing for the inner city, but not allowed to provide car spaces, but they can't provide bike racks. I often say, if you see someone walking around the city of Sydney at 9.30 at night, you know they must be lost because the place is closed down. Since 1999, Sydney's had an urban task force, predominantly made up of prominent property developers who want to promote high quality urban planning and development. They talk about promoting policies that encourage economic growth and increased employment in Sydney.